Hi, I'm Katie. Welcome to another video on my channel, Dysphagia Help with Food and Drinks. I'm a speech and language therapist and I work in the United Kingdom, but I've made this channel just in my own time based on my experience and understanding. So remember, the information here is there to help you feel confident, help you feel empowered, help you to stick to your care plan. But this is not medical information based on your personal needs. So if you need any help at all, please contact your local NHS service and ask for a dysphagia assessment from a speech and language therapist. Thank you. Hello, it's me again, it's Katie, and this is the final video in the series of what do different food textures, what do they actually mean? This is thin puree. So what does it mean? What is a thin puree? How do I know I've got it right when I'm preparing these foods for me or for someone else that I'm caring for? And how can I be confident to know that it is that thin puree? Um, in the description below is a link to the national texture descriptors for the United Kingdom. So follow that link and print that document off if you want any more information or you just want it there to refer to when you're cooking. It's really useful. None of us can remember everything all the time. So just stick it up on your cupboard, have it somewhere handy in the kitchen so you can just check it when you're preparing and do that final check before you either eat it yourself or you give it to somebody that you're caring for. Okay, don't forget to like, to share, and please subscribe and then you'll get notifications of new videos. Thank you. So here's a banana again to help us explain what a smooth, thin, puree texture food really means. Now, when you're preparing foods to this texture, you're gonna have two best friends, two things that you cannot do without when you're preparing foods. One, the trusty sieve, okay? If you're making something and you find that after preparing it, it's still got bits in, then the sieve is gonna be a fantastic tool for you to use. The other thing is going to be a blender, because unfortunately, for when preparing these textures, cutting foods up, or mashing foods up is just not going to cut it. You need a blender to achieve a smooth, thin puree texture consistency. And plus, it just really helps. I mean, if you're trying to puree a big quantity, do it in a blender. It's going to make your life so much easier. Now, there are lots of different types of blenders available and at really reasonable prices. The one you can see here, I bought as a soup and smoothie maker. So it's a lot bigger and it has settings such as smooth, to help get something a really lovely smooth texture. This is a hand chopper. It's brilliant for doing small amounts. And you also have handheld, what I call blitzers. These are useful when you're trying to blend something that's in a high sided container, like a pan. It's good because you've got the control so you can move your hand to blend different parts and you can check the thickness yourself in that way. So just have a look around and pick the one that suits your lifestyle and suits you the best. Okay, let's get started. Thin puree is texture B on the national descriptors. So what does it look like? So as we said, the food has been pureed or it has that texture of a puree. So it's not gonna need any chewing to be a safe enough consistency to swallow. Now the difference between this and a thick puree well, the clue's in the title, isn't it? It's a thin puree. But what exactly does thin mean? And how can I test that I've got it that right consistency? Thin means it wouldn't hold its shape on a plate. If you put a scoop of it down, it'd spread all over. You can't eat it with a fork because it'd drop through the prongs, the holes between the prongs. It'd drop slowly, but it'd drop through. Can you see how it's dropping through on this video? If you put the prongs of the fork into it, they wouldn't keep a clear pattern on the surface of it. And you couldn't pipe it and you couldn't layer it and you couldn't mold it because it would just spread straight away. The final thing to check though is because you've got to be really careful to get that balance between it being a thin puree but not being watery is that if you take a disposable plastic teaspoon just a cheap one that you'd find in a normal cafe or something and here's the brilliant bit something you can test no matter where you are put it into the thin puree i promise i'm not bonkers if it stands upright when the head's covered 
and all the other features that we've just talked about are there. You've got it. It's perfect. That's your thin puree texture. Woohoo! So some other things to check for. It should be smooth all the way through. It can't have any bits in, so no lumps or fibres, no skins or shells. You'd need to take those off before you pureed it. No husks, no kind of bone or gristle. So just make sure that before you puree anything, you take out all those things. And remember, if when you're doing your final check, you notice that there, it does have a few grains or bits in it, then pass it through a sieve and that'll make sure that those don't go into the final thin puree. Like you can see in this on the picture, it can have a fine textured quality, but as long as it's not big lumps and as long as it still kind of does bind together in the mouth. If you serve this with any other type of fluid or sauce, it has to all be the same thickness. So you can't have something that's this thin puree and then a really watery liquid gravy with it. It just won't work. It's all got to be the right thickness and the same thickness. Otherwise, it'll be a lot more difficult for that person to eat with the thin fluid running much faster in the mouth and dropping back into the throat and maybe into the airway before that person's ready for it. Just look how fast that black current cordial is moving. Pretty difficult to control if you've got dysphagia. And always do your last minute check before you serve it. Check there's no bits, check there's no pips, check there's no fibres, no bones, no gristle. And the ones that could catch it out, check no skins or hard covers have formed when you're cooking it. And remember that sauce that you made, the perfect thickness, so it was a thin puree consistency, they were all the same thickness, and then you went and left it ready to serve and it's thinned out. So just check that that hasn't happened, and if it has, add a little bit of thickener to it if you've got thickener or try and thicken it with something else such as like corn flour. Cut the food into small pieces before you put it into the blender. Pureeing small quantities at a time will give you the best chance of avoiding lumps. If you're trying to make any dry foods into a smooth, thick, moist texture, then always add extra liquids. Gravies, milks, creams, butters, stocks. Try and add something with a bit of flavour or with some nutrition or content rather than water because they'll add to the flavour or they'll add to the, the nutritional value of the food. Always, always puree different flavoured foods separately and then you can present them separately on the plate and never put a whole meal in together and puree. It'll look hideous and it robs that person of that beautiful opportunity to be able to taste every single individual part of the meal and it just looks so much more appetising. The bright, vibrant colours when you can see each with a thin puree, this might be a little bit more tricky, but we can still do it. You might need to present them in kind of separate, smaller bowls, but next to each other, or schedule them across a meal. Have them there so that person can signal which one they want, if it's you feeding them, but maybe keep them in separate small bowls, because it obviously, with the nature of a thin puree being that it would run, they would all run and mix in together if you put them on the same plate. I hope it's helped to make you feel confident. I hope you feel a lot more empowered to prepare foods with thin puree texture. Anyone can do this, you just need this little bit of know-how. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Leave comments, I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Remember, this is not medical information, not medical guidelines specific to you and your needs. So if you have any trouble, any difficulty, contact your local NHS service, ask for an assessment from a speech and language therapist. So this is information developed from my own experience and understanding as a speech and language therapist working within the UK. Thank you.